All right, so if anyone is looking for a way to offend basically everybody in the whole world, I think that you would combine politics, religion, and food and talk about all three of those, <laughs> which is sort of what I'm about to do. So, um, I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we have a religious guideline called the Word of Wisdom that tells us good advice, really good advice, on how to eat and avoid harmful substances and just how to live a super healthy life. And not just for your physical body, but also for your spiritual body, your spiritual mind, your spiritual life. Because when you are addicted to anything, you cannot be sensitive to the promptings of the of the spirit. You can't be as generous, as kind, as able to respond as as you need to be in this life. So that is what the word of wisdom does, is it guides us as it has for, you know, 200 years. Oh, sorry, I just did my sprints. Um, so I wanted to talk about carnivore and the word of wisdom. There are some lines in the word of wisdom that seem to suggest that we are not to eat meat except in winter and in times of famine. So the winter makes sense. This was written in 18 something. And so, and that's, that, that was the, the culture. It still is among farmers. Uh, if you've got winter coming up and you have extra animals that you don't want to be feeding over winter, all that precious hay that you've worked all year to harvest, and even now, hay is expensive. So if you don't need to overwinter your animals, then fall is the time to butcher them. And then you're eating, you're eating all that good meat. Your garden is not growing in the winter. Um, it makes a lot of sense, you know, hi historically and throughout time that winter is a different way of eating than any other time. We are the weird experiment now in America and in the modern world with our electricity and our fridges and our deep freezes and we can just defy all of that and do what do eat whatever we want any time of the year we're shipping year round shipping all over the world year round um, so that advice you could you could just put a timestamp on it and say it only applied then I don't I don't think that's the case um, so I have for a long time in my life eaten less meat eaten very little meat because I was trying to follow that advice. But there's another section to that. It says to only eat meat in, in winter and in times of famine. And that's where I start to get really, really emotional. Because if you walk around a grocery store, well, okay, let's, let's start over. Let's define, let's define a famine. A complete lack of food that will sustain life. Now walk around the grocery store and what do you see? There is a complete lack of food that will sustain life. It is a, a nutritional void land or as a uh, nourishment redacted says, our nourishment has been redacted. It has been crossed out, blacked out and hidden from us. So that is what I am looking at and I believe that Politically, um, that there are movements in within the government, within government agencies, within um, you know other kinds of movements that are trying to take away our right to eat what we want, what we choose to eat, which for me is meat, and and I believe it's the only thing left that that is not nutritionally void, that the only thing left that will sustain me in the food famine that I've been in my whole life. If all the food I've been eating was wonderful and nutritious, I wouldn't be sick. I wouldn't be unwell. Our bodies are designed by God to be amazing, amazing bodies that can heal unless you aren't providing enough nourishment or you are being poisoned or like, emotionally stressed out like if you remove all the bad and you add in all the good our bodies should be just 
thriving all the time. And since they're not, I think of it as a, as a famine that we're in. So therefore, I feel completely justified within the guidelines of the word of wisdom to be wise, <laughs> to have wisdom, and to eat the meat that will nourish me, plentifully nourish my body. So I want to add something on to the end of that video. As soon as I said justified, I knew that that was not the right word. Because you can justify anything and that's, that's not what I in intended to say. I feel like I've been invited by the Spirit to try carnivore and that it is endorsed by my Father in Heaven for me to try it because He wants me to feel good. He wants me to feel healthy. Um, so it's not a, it's not a justification thing at all. <laughs> I have listened to several other videos um, about meat and carnivore diet through a Christian perspective and I have really, really enjoyed those videos. I invite you to go and watch some. The Bible, we are instructed to be stewards of this earth and to kindly and lovingly care for these animals for our benefit and use. And I believe that carnivore is an appropriate way to do that. Um, to raise these animals up and then eat them in a very respectful, grateful way. And I think that they, they are of God for us to use and to be healthy. And clearly the results are showing that they help you to be healthy. I hope that people will be willing to respond without uh, insulting or assaulting religion itself, but I would love to have a discussion about what you think, either about um, how the Word of Wisdom talks about meat, or just, you know, biblical references to, to meat and to food. Um, Abraham had flocks and herds all, all of those ancient uh, prophets, they ran on meat. They fueled their people with meat. Um, I think it's very interesting that so many people now are finding that they don't feel good on pork. And that was, um, oh, now I'm not going to be able to think of it. It's not. Mm, but it's one, one of those meats that the Lord told the ancient Israelites not to eat. And I cannot remember the word for that. But um, I think that's very interesting that they were instructed not to eat pork. And now people who are eating meat only are finding that ruminant animals are the way to go for them. It's just interesting. What do you think? What have you noticed?